Today we're gonna learn how to make this become this. All within After Effects. And before we do that, I'm Austin Smith. This is DMM Films, a channel dedicated to creating unique and creative content that's creative. And we say create a lot here because we're creators. But with all that creating as well, it's also dedicated to hopefully inspiring you to become a better creative person. Hopefully, I don't know. All I know is I got a cut on the tip of my tongue and all this talking is killing me. Let's do it. So here we have our drone shot right here that we'll be working with. And as you can see here, it's not a desert, clearly. The first thing we wanna do is we want to track the camera within our shot. So we can go up here to our tracker point. If that menu is not available, you can always go to window and go to tracker right here. You can also look right beside libraries, click the arrow, you'll get a drop down menu and you can click motion tracking. So if we select our shot and we come up here to track camera, we just click it and After Effects begins doing its beautiful work. And now we sit back, we wait, we maybe get a scone. And now that it's done, we can go up here and we can click create camera. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a virtual 3D camera that's basically guessing where the camera was in 3D space that we actually used to film with it. So the next thing you wanna do is with all these track points, you wanna find a nice surface target point uh, to create a knoll out of. And we wanna use one that's up on this bank up here because the further away is gonna be better. We don't wanna use track points right here if we're adding in something in the background. Track points right here just aren't gonna work as well. So if we go back here, this one right here actually looks really good. And when I say it looks good, what I'm saying is you can see the uh, bullseye target we have right here appears to be laying uh, flat and at the proper angle in 3D space. If you wanna select more than just the three, you can always click, hold down, and then begin to lasso as many as you want. And we can do the same thing, and you can see it actually, I mean, that looks great too. So with your track point selected, right mouse click and go to create null. And you can see here we have a track null one has been created in our timeline. So now that we have our drone shot, 3D track with a camera and a null to work with, next thing to do is to remove this background here to replace it with our desert mountains. So what we wanna do is we wanna right mouse click on our drone footage, go to effects, Boris FX Mocha, Mocha AE, and then you're gonna see in the effects panel, this is gonna pop up. Click Mocha right here. Now before we click it, make sure you go to your quality and click full, uh, but, but even if you don't, it will warn you. If I click right here, you'll see it says, the host is not set to full resolution. Tracking at reduced resolution can be faster, but less accurate. Anyway, we go full and then click the Mocha icon and Mocha will open up. So in Mocha, we can come up here, select our pen tool and then hold down Z, zoom in a little bit and start creating a mask around. I wanna go around these little bushes up here. That's gonna be our horizon point doesn't have to be so, so perfect with it since we will be feathering it out as well. Once we created that mask, we can select all of our points, grab one of these handles and begin to move it down and that's going to smooth out all of our edges. I'm gonna come down here and click small motion because it's not gonna be that much movement. And then we can click the T right here, play button, track forward. And now it will begin to track our mask along the shot. And when Mocha finishes tracking your shot, what you wanna do is you wanna go to your track points and then you want to adjust them. So we can select all these and just move them back down to where they were basically at the beginning. And we can see just adjusting the end shot there, if we scrub through, uh, everything looks really, looks perfect. So to export the information that you've just created within Mocha to After Effects, just Control S to save and then just exit out and that's all you need to do. We can go back to the effects panel right here, hit the drop down menu for matte and then select apply matte. And now you can see our shot has now cut out the horizon and we're left just with the ground here. We can feather it up to 100. Now let's fill in this space. So what we have here is we have this photo right here. First thing we wanna do is adjust our photo to make it look the most natural it can look. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna come down here and you can see we have this cube right here. We can select this little square right here and the cube's gonna pop up. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make our photo now a 3D layer. Now we can select our pick whip tool and select the track null. And if I hit play, you'll see that our photo is now being affected by the null. Now it is being tracked in the shot, but you'll see it's moving way too fast at our camera. So how do we fix that? Basically, our photo is right here from the top view. And as our camera moves, 
our photo is on the same plane as our footage. They're both, they're both on this line right here. Whereas in reality, if this was an actual shot, these mountains would be much further away. So what we need to do is we need to take our photo and we need to push it back further this way. So if we select the blue arrow, that's the Z axis, it's also right here. We can select that, hold down shift, and then drag it far, far back. From there, we can scale up back to where it used to be, adjust again. And now if we hit play, you can see that the mountains are tracked properly in our shot and not going all wonky. So the next thing we wanna do is we are going to separate our background into three different sections. We have this mountain right here, this one right here, and then this one all the way back here. And as we know in 3D space, when you're moving and when you're walking, whatever, the point of view you're seeing, stuff further away is gonna move slower and stuff closer is gonna move faster. So we wanna give that same effect to our image. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna duplicate our layer twice. So we have three different options. The top one will be the closest one and we'll create a mask around that one first. So the one to our left. And now we'll create a mask on the mountain to our right. And then for the back layer, we won't need to create any mask, but what we will need to do is we'll need to remove these two mountains from the background layer. So if we double click on the layer, it'll open up in its own source. We can go up to the clone stamp tool up here. What the clone stamp tool does, it takes a part of your image and then it allows you to stamp it elsewhere. So if you hold down alt, you can select the part that you want the stamp to work with. So what we wanna do is we wanna hold down alt, select the horizon right here, and now just draw straight across and you can see it's going to add clouds, stamp those clouds over, and we're going to now remove this mountaintop. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, select Alt, select this horizon, and then go straight across. And there we have it, so we can go back to our composition. And as before, when we were adjusting this Z axis right here, when we were pushing the image further away from our 3D camera, we want to adjust that again, but now separately for our three hilltops. So for this one in the back, we want to push back even further. So we can select it right here, hold down shift, and just drag down, and that's going to push it back. And we can scale up. And then for the one in the front, we can just bring it forward a little bit. Scale down. And once you're done with that, a little tip is to select our back layer and we can see in the effects panel, the paint effect is visible, which was referring to the clone stamping that we did. Click the FX and turn it off just because it does kill your RAM and it can slow editing down a lot. So just right before you render, make sure you just turn it back on. So if we play through, we can see how our left hill is moving, our right hill is moving a little slower and the back hill is hardly moving at all. And you can really notice it if you look at the clouds in the background how this hill is moving past the clouds in the background. That's really what's gonna sell your effect. And you can see here how we're seeing the hill also in the background. Remember, if we just turn back on our clone stamping, we can see that it'll be all fine. The next thing we wanna do is we want to color correct our drone footage to match the color of our image. So if we right mouse click our drone footage, go to effect, color correction, lumetry color. What we're going to do is we're going to set the temperature to 15, the contrast to 35, the highlights to five, the shadows to negative 27, whites to negative 56, blacks to negative 25, saturation to 135, and then if we open up our curves, we're going to bring up the highlights, slightly bring down the shadows. I'm gonna do the same thing with the red curve, slightly bring down the shadows, slightly bring up the highlights. And in our color wheels, we're going to bring some oranges up in the midtones, and then bring some blues into the highlights and again drop our shadows a little bit more as well. And this is the result we get from that, which I think looks really good. Next thing we want to do is we want to add in that beautiful bird. We got this footage from Pexels.com and all it is is just a man who is filming an eagle, it looks like, uh, flying through the clouds. The nice thing is the eagle is very dark and the background, the sky is very bright. It's going to be very helpful. So we can pull this into a new composition. And the first thing we want to do is we want to stabilize the motion. So if we go to the tracker panel, click stabilize motion. You can see here we have a track point that pops up and with that track point we want to put it right on our eagle's head right there and scale down this one right here and hit play to now have it track. Wow! Now we hit play to have it track through. going 
through, obviously you have to adjust it a lot, especially with a shot like this where there's so much movement. But once it's done, we can hit apply. And now you can see it keeps the bird dead center of where the track point was. And this is going to allow us to use the bird as an asset in our shot. Next thing I'm gonna do is right mouse click, effect, go to color correction, lumetry color, and then right mouse click, effect, go to keying and extract. And we want to start to extract the white. So the 255 right here, we're going to drag it down a lower number. And you can see it's now extracting and keying out the white first and then it starts to remove the blue a little bit and then eventually everything so with the lumetry color we want to go to the curves and we want to go to hue versus luma and what this does is you can select the specific hue to adjust its uh lumination so if we select a anchor point right here anchor point right here and then get one right in the center there so we can adjust the blue we can push it up and that's going to make the blue uh, luminance much wider and you can see here how it's removing more of the blue without affecting the bird as much Now we have a decently keyed shot of a bird flying we can control C open up our Comp and then paste it in and if we scale it down and then select P to see our position Hit the stopwatch to create a keyframe then go to the end of our shot right here and have our little Bird friend just drag him over a little bit and make sure you turn on the motion blur of that layer. And that leaves us left with this as our little bird friend moves across the frame. Next thing we're gonna do is duplicate our bird. And with the one on the bottom, you wanna right mouse click, click pre-compose, we can name it bird shadow. And then make sure we move all attributes into the new composition. Right mouse click on that layer again, go to transform and then flip vertically. And you can see our bird is now upside down down here and what we want to do is we want to first go to effect and color correction exposure and just drop it all the way down so it's a solid black and then right mouse click effect blur gaussian blur and then bring up the blur a little bit something to about 25 next we want to scale it up just a little bit get it to where we want in a comfortable way and then the last thing we're gonna do is right mouse click effect distort go to displacement map click luminance for both of these where it says red and green change it to luminance you can keep it at five for both of them but the important thing is to go to our map layer and instead of having the bird shadow selected we want to select our drone footage it's very subtle but what this is going to do is it's going to allow our shadow to bend and morph around the actual drone footage that we have making it look more natural lastly click t and adjust the opacity to 45 and looking at the shot, I actually want to adjust the Gaussian blur a little bit more. Let's put it from 25 to 55. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some dust in front of our camera. So if I select this shot right here, you can see we have this nice atmospheric haze brought to you by Action Essentials Pack. This could also be made at home by yourself with a haze machine and a black background pretty easily. So if we just drag this in here, put it right on top, scale it up pretty big. I'm going to pull the dust over just to be barely visible. I'm going to right mouse click, go to effect, color correction tint we're going to add a little bit of a orange tint to our dust i also want to affect go to blur gaussian blur and add some blur to it as well next we're going to right mouse click in our timeline hit new adjustment layer take that adjustment layer and bring it to the top so the next thing i did with this shot is add a lens flare through video copilot's optical flares so if we have an adjustment layer we go to effect video copilot's right down here we can click optical flares click the options over here select our presets and go to natural flares select the rim light and then at your adjustment layer go to the blending mode change it from normal to add and move our flare off screen just to get a nice little texture in the corner here right mouse click on our adjustment layer again go to effects blur gaussian blur and we're just going to blur out that flare a little bit and in the optical flare options the position x y we're going to select the stopwatch to create a keyframe on the first frame drag to the end and take our flare point right here and just drag it out this way and now we have this nice smooth little rim flare right there the last thing you'd want to do with this shot is to simply color it how you would like if i put a simple western light on here you can see how coloring it really does help uh, blend in our shot as well and that's still right there honestly it looks pretty awesome and as a bonus what i did as well is select all the layers right mouse click pre-compose we can just title it final and then right mouse click in our timeline, go to composition settings, 
And what I did was adjust it to a, I believe, 2.66 by one aspect ratio, which is very reminiscent of uh, CinemaScope uh, style back in the day, which they filmed a lot of Westerns in that aspect ratio. I'm not sure what the uh, aspect ratio is for 4K footage, but I do know it for HD. So if we unlock our aspect ratio right here, and I type in the width, which is 1920, and then the height 720, that is the aspect ratio in HD of uh, 2.66 by one. And we click the lock back on and then retype the 496 of the 4K. We'll be left with a 4K size quality of that aspect ratio, hit okay. Since we've created a more skinny aspect ratio, we'll have to adjust our framing of the shot. So we'll bring it up to see the people better. We'll create a keyframe of the position at the beginning and at the end, we'll drag the shot down so then we can see the distant horizon. And that is how you can extend and add new backgrounds to your footage, making a beach look like the Utah desert. Like this video to help push the algorithm, subscribe to show your support of the channel, and I will see you in the next video. My knees are killing me.